Welcome back to Rebel Fem Podcast. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the importance of customer service as a hairstylist working behind the chair. And I think this is a really big topic that or important topic we should cover because this topic kind of got brought on by a viral video on TikTok, which we're going to share with you a little later. It's just kind of been circulating around the internet and really on all social platforms. And we wanted to talk more about it, you know, what the response was from the hair community overall. It was kind of insane. There was a lot of responses. So let's jump right in. We're picking up on the viral client video. Oh, I don't know if we just want to start out by, do you want me to just play the video? Yeah, let's just play the video. Okay. Let's just do it. And then we'll show the video to our viewers on YouTube. And go. Some of y'all hairstylists need to get your head out of your ass. I, I said what I said. Um, I did say some. So if it applies, maybe stick around for some constructive criticism. If it doesn't, stick around for entertainment purposes or scroll on. I don't care. But I cannot simply handle this anymore. Um... I have recently been in the market for a new hairstylist, but it is not something that I've just recently encountered. This has been something that I've encountered in the past as well, okay? I'm in the market not because my old hairdressers were bad. Um, They were great. I just simply can't afford them anymore. So I was looking for something that was a little more affordable, but still good quality. Um, And I'm so tired of y'all getting so pissed. Like, y'all are so quick to clap back, okay, at anything. Y'all want to get in your feelings about everything get pissed off take everything personally and it's so apparent it's ridiculous as a paying customer someone that's about to walk out of your salon wearing your product on my head i am allowed to ask educated respectful questions okay and you should not get offended by that when i worked in insurance and clients came into the door it was my job to persuade them and let them know why i was better than all the rest okay unless your clientele list is exhausted unless it, you've got all the clients that you need or ever want then by all means why are you even taking new client phone calls my dear but if you're still taking new client phone calls and asking people what they need done and they're a new client to you then when you get when you clap back at them for asking respectful educated questions and you automatically take offense as if they're attacking your capabilities I don't know you from nowhere and your industry is huge babe it's huge and just like in every other industry we all know not every hairstylist is the best okay you can walk out looking pretty funky all right if you if you're not careful so when i ask someone it happened a few years ago hey do any of you all specialize in shag cuts is there anyone someone that's a little bit stronger at haircuts that you guys refer everybody to um and you clap back at me and say well, we all cut hair every day. I would say we're all pretty well versed in it. That's a smart ass remark for no reason. And you don't deserve clients walking in your door if you're talking to them like that. Um, two, if I text you and I'm referred to you, referred by a friend to you, and I say, hey, I need a full highlight. I haven't got it done since October. Um, and if you specialize in shag cuts, I probably need some reshaping of that as well. If not, I'll just take the full highlight. And you ghost me for two days and then say to me, you should probably go somewhere else. I wouldn't want you to be dissatisfied. How else am I supposed to take that? It's bullshit. Luckily, I did find a sweet girl to do my hair. I didn't get a haircut. I'll probably go back to my old hairstylist to get that still cut because she's really good. But I just, you guys should rethink that shit because it's fucked up. You shouldn't be doing people like that. We have a right to shop and we have a right to ask. So, yeah, (laughs) that was a lot. I don't know. What are your opinions on what you just watched? I have, I guess, mixed thoughts. I agree with the fact that ghosting a client, anybody who's asking for prices or anything like that is wrong and a no-no. Like, just answer their question. Um, They're literally asking a question just to get clarification on their end. And I don't see what the problem is in answering that question. I don't know why you have to be catty about it. But on the other side... I don't know. Like, I feel like I've answered those questions for clients and then I've been ghosted and I'm like, well, I took all that time to answer your question. Where, where'd you go? Yeah. <laughs> like, just tell me. Oh, sorry. So I feel like I don't know this lady um, at all. And I did watch some of the hairstylist video on TikTok as well that she was. Oh, see, I haven't seen any of that. Yeah. And I just kind of have like mixed opinions on it. I feel like there's a lot of missing information 
And I feel like this was just kind of really triggered by not just the stylist, it was probably like multiple stylists. And this is something that I, I speak about a lot of the time, but I really feel like hairdressers don't, in general, don't have really good customer service skills. I, I do think that kind of how she opened it up with like, you guys need to get your head out your ass. It's pretty aggressive. It is aggressive, but I also feel like she's kind of right because a lot of hairdressers that are in this industry, like or today that work behind the chair, they have like this God complex or like this ego of like, yeah. I'm so fucking amazing and you're coming to see me. And then we forget that it's w- about them. It's about them. And then we're service providers. We provide a service to the public. So I don't know. Like I said, there's just lots of missing information. And I think this all stems from the lack of customer service skill and knowledge on the hairdresser's end because she's this isn't just like one time she's probably experienced this for her to make a video like this this is probably like multiple times yeah so on that end i kind of agree with her um and like i said there's just like lots of missing information i don't know there was something else that she said that like about asking questions um yeah i think 100 percent. like that's what we're here for is to answer those questions and oh she had said something about you know how like the smart ass remark of like well we're all skilled and we all do great we work do care every day and all that other stuff yeah like i've actually witnessed hairstylists saying something like that or along the lines of like why are you even fucking asking me that question yeah can i can i cut your hair you know what I mean? But I think it's a legitimate question. Yeah. Can not you- everybody is well versed in everything. Totally. I mean, I we experienced yes. that this weekend. Um, I had a, a client sit in my chair. I had never met her before and totally my bad. I should have screened her prior for her coming in for the service, but it was for a color correction. And needless to say, it was a vivid application that was outside of my skill set. So I had recommended her going to Yadira because that's definitely like up her alley. Like she loves doing vivids. And the client was a little upset because I did not want to do her hair. It wasn't that I didn't want to do her hair. I just felt like I wasn't the best person for the look that she was trying to achieve. And I'd rather her be really happy with the end result and, you know, her go to somebody who can 100 percent feel confident in giving her what she wants yeah yeah and i don't think there's anything wrong with that um i did that recently too with one of my regulars she has a pixie cut and i'm totally comfortable doing pixie cuts but she came in and showed me this inspo photo that had a clipper in it and i was like oh you are out of my realm of expertise this is jewel yeah (laughs) she can totally take care of you yeah uh and you know so in that respect i can see why she would be frustrated if like she asked the stylist can you cut my hair can you do this type of haircut and if the stylist does get offended and and responds with the whole like well, of course I can cut your hair or, you know, I cut hair every day. I can see that being like, what the hell? Oh, yeah. I would just, you know, because we all do different things. And I feel like that's, a, again, a legitimate, a legitimate question to ask. So I think it's just, you know, it just kind of boils down to customer service. Um, in the sense of like ghosting, though, like I said, I watched the other hairstylist video and it did look like she kind of ghosted her at the end. Oh, really? But like, like I said, I don't have all the information, so don't quote me on that. But <laughs> I just feel like, yeah, there's just something missing there because she just kind of was like, oh, I don't think like I can, you know, I don't do shag haircuts, but you can go, you know, I'm not the best hairstylist for you. And but there's also X, Y, Z or this person or. Yeah. Like redirect. Yeah. Redirect. Give it. Give me to somebody else. But again, I don't know. It's the, the lady did come off kind of aggressive. Yeah. So I think that's kind of why the hair industry just went like, rawr, <laughs> like right on top of her. <laughs> because I think also right now in this, I guess this time, it's kind of like where everybody's setting their boundaries. Yeah. So it's all about boundaries now. It, it's very touchy. Like everybody's very like hypersensitive because I do agree there should be some sort of boundary set between a client and a stylist because everything's done via social media. It's like we're open 24 7 100 percent. so i think this is like another like it was more of like a boundary thing in a way for sure that's what i'm saying i think there's like missing information here but you know the bottom line the hairdresser has every right to refuse a service oh yeah um and the client has every right to express their frustration you know uh, this all boils down like i said this all boils down to 
customer service, which is communication. And Mm -hmm. how can we, you know, navigate through that so we can make everybody happy, whether you do their hair or not. So that's kind of why I'm like the hair industry will totally hate me for saying this, but I kind of like side with this lady. (laughs) I do like I kind of like hearing her like be upset. Like as a salon owner, I would just be like, let me see the the interaction, the conversation and dissect it from di- there. Yeah, because I would hate for anybody that came to my salon feeling like they weren't heard or we didn't give uh, other options available to them. Does that yeah. make sense? No. Yeah, that perfectly makes sense. It's kind of like that lady that came in that wanted the vivid. Imagine if I was just like, oh, yeah, I can't do that. So like, sorry, I'm not the right person for you. And then that was it. It was like, hey, I have somebody that I know can do this for you. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's the customer service that kicks in. Yeah, that's the part that was missing in this interaction is what it seems like. For sure. Do you feel like, I don't know. So you've watched a lot of the hairdressers reactions. Yes. What do you think about that on some of them? Uh, The ones that I've seen have come off very almost emotional. Yeah. Like it was attack mode like she opened this aggressively so i'm gonna open it aggressively too like i'm gonna match that instead of maybe having an open discussion about it yeah so i think the way that the hair industry responded it as a whole um there was one video i watched where was she responded really calmly and and i kind of understood her point too uh I forget her, her handle or whatever, but majority of the styles that came off aggressive, it was just like, you literally just validated what she said. What she said is that we're all fucking emotional and and ego. Yeah. You just, you just, you just proved her fucking point. Then that's why her video is still up. You guys, (laughs) (laughs) you did not help our case. I think the ego thing or like this god complex yeah i think a lot of that kind of goes away as you as you get older yeah like i'm amazing the arrogance yeah it's like dude like just come down a little bit it's all good it's okay (laughs) not to make everybody happy you know exactly i don't know that's just my take on it (laughs) could it be that the hair industry is full of a bunch of people who are people pleasers probably and because we're in the service industry like i feel like that's majority of us go that route at least in, when we're younger <laughs> i think the hair industry is full of very creative people who take what they do their job with what, what we do creatively personally regardless so that's why we're emotional about what we do because we're artists because the 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 fact is is that if we fuck up your hair for whatever reason we we jack it up right <laughs> letting the consumer know here person who gets services here if the hair says me i fuck up your hair for whatever reason and you hate it and you yell at me or you are upset you cry like whatever it is right you're not the only one crying about it okay that is on repeat all day long like lit days days and nights because we lay in bed and we go and we go, oh, my God, she fucking hates her hair. I could have did this differently. I could have did that differently. And then you sob in bed for like days because as you're and like, then you wake up at four in the morning and guess what you're thinking about? <laughs> Seriously, like we take it personally. Yeah. So I can I can understand why too. like, again, I'm seeing both sides here, but I can see why like the hair industry responded the way they did. Yeah. But a lot of that, like I said, goes away with like age, I think, for the most part, Um because if this were me like 15, 20 years ago, I definitely would probably would have reacted the same way. <laughs> Just to be honest. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I guess. You've always been like chill and nice, though. <laughs> You're not crazy like the rest of us. Well, I have my moments. <laughs> so I just keep it <laughs> hidden for the most part. <laughs> so if you want to take a look at this video, um, we're going to have it on our YouTube channel channel um shared in this podcast um but you got to at least listen to it um she does have her comments all turned off and you cannot stitch it and you can't uh do edit you can't nothing to this video She's- and we're not asking anybody to comment further on it <laughs> <laughs> that is not what we're trying to do no not at all <laughs> but if you want to put your own opinion on our youtube channel under this that's that's fine yeah leave your two cents there yeah get it out just put it in there just don't hate me for saying what I said. 
trying to be nice here on both ends. Playing devil devil's advocate. I, I always play devil's advocate. That's my MO. There's because there's always there's two sides to every story. Exactly. There is. It's never just there's never right one. or wrong. No, there's not. There's you have to put yourself in the client's shoes, yeah. even if they're fucking crazy. And we've had some crazy ones. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just let that simmer. OK. Uh. Hence our bad Yelp review episode. Yeah. We're just glad that you go to Ulta and get your hair done. Oh, okay. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> thanks for listening to the Rebel Femme Podcast. Before we go, hey, I'm allowed to say whatever the fuck I want on my podcast. And if you don't agree, make your own damn podcast and talk about it. She's right. Okay, so before we go, show us some love on your favorite streaming platform. Um, we're on Apple Podcast. Google Play, Spotify, all of the things. Um, and make sure you follow our Instagram page at Rebel Femme, where we break down this episode and have a bunch of amazing hair content. And you get to see all the work that the rest of the artists here do. And finally, if you want to book an appointment, listen to this podcast or shop online, all of your favorite products, you can head to rebelfemme.com. That's it. That's it. That's it. Bye. Bye. <laughs>